नेक्स्ट विल डिस्कस अबाउट पल्स स्टूडेंट्स ओके डियर स्टूडेंट्स पल्स इज एग्जामिन अंडर रेट रिदम वॉल्यूम कैरेक्टर ऑफ द पल्स कंडीशन ऑफ द वेजल वॉल पेरिफरल पल्स ऑफ वेदर इट इज फेल्ट आर नॉट एंड रेडियो फेमोरिटी सो विल एग्जामिन पल्स वन बाय वन फर्स्ट इज द रेट द नॉर्मल रेट ऑफ पल्स एट इज बिटवीन सिक्सटी टू हंड्रेड पर मिनट लेस दैन सिक्सटी इज नॉन एज ब्रेडी कार्डिया मोर दैन हंड्रेड इज नॉन एज टिकी कार्डिया वट आर द कंडीशन इज प्रोड्यूस ए ब्रेडी कार्डिया फिजियोलॉजिकल अथ्लीट्स स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन विल बी ए फिजियोलॉजिकल ब्रेडी कार्डिया during sleep what are the pathological condition which produces bradycardia hypothyroidism six sinus syndrome severe hypoxia bradyarrhythmias rise intracranial tension obstructive jaundice and drugs calcium channel blockers like diltiazem beta blockers can produce bradycardia what are the condition which produces tachycardia anxiety fright stress can produce tachycardia along with fever sometimes high output states like anemia beriberi thyrotoxicosis there will be tachycardia and tachyarrhythmias svts atrial fibrillation there will be tachycardia then antiviral myocardial infarction antiviral myocardial infarction will produce tachycardia whereas infiviral will produce bradycardia then shock and hypotension hypovolemia all these can produce tachycardia drugs sympathomimetic drugs thyroxin can produce tachycardia we would always count the pulse for one whole minute the radial artery is for the rate and rhythm the carotid for the character and the volume so next is the rhythm rhythm can be regularly irregular or irregularly irregular regularly irregular you get in paroxysmal atrial tachycardia with a fixed block or pulses by gemini and trigemini regularly irregular so by gemini and trigemini and atrial tachycardia with fixed block you get regularly irregular irregularly irregular you get in two important condition ventricular premature beats and atrial fibrillation how do you distinguish a vpc from a atrial fibrillation in a vpc the pulse deficit will be less than 10 how to look for pulse deficit i show now pulse deficit you have to auscultate with the to, in the heart and simultaneously you have to palpate the pulse the heart beats which are heard which are not conducted to the periphery you have to count it that is one method or the other method is two person one person can auscultate one person should feel the pulse for one minute then you have to subtract it then there is a pulse deficit so one minute you have to auscultate and feel the pulse which are the heart beats which are not conducted to the periphery that you have to count the pulse deficit is more than 10 in atrial fibrillation less than 10 in ventricular premature beat airway will be absent in atrial fibrillation because atria just fibrillates it don't contract in atrial fibrillation whereas in vpc sometimes you may get canon airways because there is a disenergy between atria and ventricle atria may contract again as a close valve if you ask the patient to do exercise vpcs will disappear whereas af will persist or it may increase s1 will be of a variable intensity in atrial fibrillation these are the differences between vpcs and atrial fibrillation and another condition where you get irregular irregular pulse is atrial tachycardia with variable block apart from vpc and atrial fibrillation so rate and rhythm next is volume volume of the pulse how do you assess i'll show now the pulse is the radial artery you have to feel above the radial bone with the three fingers 
the middle finger upliftment how much it is uplifting your finger the middle finger is give a clue about the volume you can measure it by pulse pressure the normal pulse pressure is around 40 if it is more than 60 it is a very high volume pulse here only i will show how to look for condition of the vessel wall you have to feel the pulse like this then you have to empty the column of the blood then you have to roll over the bone roll over the bone for the condition of the vessel wall so that is about the volume of the pulse then character so students we have examined general physical examination so let us examine the pulse and the pulse discussion i will do now see students this is how the normal pulse looks okay this is s1 and s2 okay so now here pulse has a two waves the percussion wave and a dichrotic wave in between the percussion wave and dichrotic wave you can see a notch here that is a dichrotic notch or insusura insusura or a dichrotic notch the wave before the dichrotic notch is the percussion wave the wave after the dichrotic notch is the dichrotic wave so here there are some pearls with some special character so this hyperdynamic state okay see you can see the amplitude of the pulse is increased the hyperdynamic pulse you get in anemia thyrotoxicosis aortic regurgitation av fistulas severe bradycardia high output states okay you get hyperdynamic states this hyperdynamic pulse here in the diagram c students you can see the height of the pulse is less and also the peaking is less so it's a pulses parvus that is parvus is less volume and tardus late peaking so it's also known as anachronic pulse so the pulses parvus et tardus you get in aortic stenosis that is anachronic pulse next you can see in the diagram d students there is one big pulse and another is a small pulse this is a pulses alternus pulses alternus you get in left ventricular failure pulses alternus is a feature of left ventricular failure aortic regurgitation hypertension and hypotensive states so pulses alternus you see in left ventricular failure aortic regurgitation hypertension and hypotensive shock you get pulses alternance so is alternating large and small volume pulse next you have pulses bisiferens see this is a systole between s1 and s2 see you can see two peaks in the systole only that is pulses bisiferens two peaks occurring in the systole only the condition Pulses bisiferens sometimes normally you may get in a exercise and fever, exercise and fever, whereas pathologically you get in aortic regurgitation or aortic regurgitation with aortic stenosis, HOCM. Unilateral bisiferens you may get in aortic dissection. So I repeat, pulses bisiferens you may get normal person in a fever and exercise. Whereas pathologically you get in HOCM, AS with AR or predominantly AR, unilateral bisiferens you get in aortic dissection. The F diagram you see students here, this is systole S1 and S2, there is one in diastole peak, one in systolic peak. So one peak in systole, one peak in diastole like this is a dichrotic pulse. Diagrotic pulse you get in sepsis, intraaortic balloon counter pulsation, typhoid fever, dilated cardiomyopathy, left heart failure and cardiac tamponade. I repeat, diagrotic pulse there are one wave in systole, one wave in diastole. You get in sepsis, intraaortic balloon counter pulsation, 
டைஃபாய்டு ஃபீவர் டைலிட்டட் கார்டியோமயோபதி கார்டியாக் டேம்போனேட் லெஃப்ட் ஹார்ட் ஃபெயிலியர் அண்ட் திஸ் ஸ்பைக் அண்ட் டோம் பேட்டர்ன் இன் ஹெச்ஓசிஎம் திஸ் பல்ஸ் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஸோ எகேன் ஐ வில் டெல் வைல் டிஸ்கஸிங் பல்ஸ் த கேரக்டர்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் ஜஸ்ட் டு ஷோ யூ த டயக்ராம்ஸ் அண்ட் த கண்டிஷன் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஸோ வி டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் த பல்ஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் வில் கோ டு த டிஸ்கஷன் ஆன் பிளட் ப்ரெஷர் வாட் ஆர் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கேரக்டர்ஸ் ஆஃப் த பல்ஸ் அனாக்ரோட்டிக் பல்ஸ் அனாக்ரோட்டிக் பல்ஸ் இஸ் கால்ஸ் நோ ஆஸ் பல்சஸ் பார்வஸ் எட்டாடஸ் விச் யூ கெட் இன் அயோட்டிக் ஸ்டீகோசிஸ் ஸ்லோ ரைசிங் லேட் பீக்கிங் லோ வால்யூம் லோ வால்யூம் இஸ் பல்சஸ் பார்வஸ் எட்டாடஸ் இஸ் லேட் பீக்கிங் பல்சஸ் பார்வஸ் எட்டாடஸ் யூ கெட் இன் அயோட்டிக் ஸ்டீகோசிஸ் பல்சஸ் பார்வஸ் ஓன்லி அ லோ வால்யூம் யூ கெட் இன் மைட்ரஸ் ஸ்டீகோசிஸ் Hyperkinetic pulse, a high volume pulse, you get in high output lesions like AV malformations, beriberi, thyrotoxicosis, aortic regurgitation, ventricular septal defects, a high volume pulse. Bifid or a bisifarence pulse, normally you can get in fever and excise. Pathologically you get in AS with AR or isolated AR. or unilateral bisifarens you get in aortic dissection pulses bisifarens means as i explained in theory there will be two peaks in systole that is pulses bisifarens diacrotic pulse one peak in systole one peak in diastole diacrotic pulse you get in fever typhoid fever dilated cardiomyopathy left ventricular failure pericardial tamponade sepsis an intraaortic counter balloon pulsation i repeat typhoid fever dcm heart failure pericardial tamponade sepsis intraaortic balloon pulsation you get diacrotic pulse one in systole one in diastole i showed in the theory how it looks next is pulses alternates one strong contraction one weak contraction strong and weak pulses alternates Pulses alternance is a feature of left heart failure. It can be seen in AR, hypertension or hypotensive states. Heart failure predominantly, but it can be seen sometimes even in paroxysmal tachycardia. So after that you can see AR, hypertension and hypotensive states. Pulses by Gemini, one normal, one ectopic. One normal, one ectopic. One normal, one ectopic. Pulses by Gemini. What is the difference between pulses alternates and pulses by Gemini? Pulses alternates rhythm is regular. Only strong and weak, strong and weak you get pulses. Whereas by Gemini rhythm will be irregular. Then water hammer pulse. How to look for water hammer pulse? Go to the patient. You have to hold left hand in the forearm. right hand you have to feel the pulse then suddenly you have to lift the hand above the level of heart like this then you will feel the pulse through the forearm because of the diastolic run off you will feel the pulse through the forearm i'll show again suddenly you have to lift the hand above the heart level water hammer pulse you get in aortic regurgitation high output states and as av malformations av fistulas pulses paradoxes normally there is a systolic bp will be less around 10 with inspiration if there is a exaggeration of that more than 10 it is known as pulses paradoxes some say it is a misnomer but some say when in pulses paradoxes heart is beating and you are not feeling the pulse that is a paradox What are the cause of pulses paradoxes? Pericardial tamponade, classically described. You can get in constrictive pericarditis, superior vena cable obstruction, asthma, COPD, pulmonary embolism, tension pneumothorax, and hemorrhagic shock. I repeat, constrictive pericarditis, pericardial tamponade, superior vena cable obstruction, bronchial asthma and COPD, pulmonary embolism, 
tension pneumothorax and hemorrhagic shock you may get pulses paradoxes how to measure pulses paradoxes i and pulses alternance while discussing blood pressure i will tell with using bp how to measure the pulses paradoxes and pulses alternance this is about the pulse discussion hello now uh, in the end of pulse examination we have to see the peripheral pulses and radio femoral delay so this has to be added in the pulse examination so now what are the pulses you will feel radial pulse brachial pulse carotid pulse femoral dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial so i will demonstrate now how to examine for these pulses the radial pulse will be palpated against the radius bone with the three fingers this is a radial pulse examination next is brachial artery pulsation so students brachial artery pulsations how to palpate i'll demonstrate his hand should be rested on your forearm then just medial to the tendon of biceps you have to palpate for a brachial artery then brachial artery can also be palpated again as the humerus okay with your thumb then students carotid artery pulsation the right carotid artery is palpated with the left thumb left carotid with the right thumb carotid artery should be palpated at the upper level of tracheal at the upper level of thyroid cartilage where it will bifurcate into external carotid and internal carotid so this is the upper border of the thyroid cartilage with the right carotid with my thumb i will palpate the left thumb then the left carotid i should palpate with the right thumb this is a carotid artery pulsation next we will discuss femoral artery pulsation dorsalis pedis artery and posterior tibial artery now femoral artery pulsation you will palpate over the head of the femur in the mid inguinal point so you put your finger like this on the head of the femur in the mid inguinal point you will palpate for the femoral artery next is dorsalis pedis artery and posterior tibial yeah students how to palpate for the posterior tibial and dorsalis pedis artery posterior tibial artery just behind the medial malleolus you can palpate it okay so this is medial malleolus just behind the medial malleolus you can palpate the posterior tibial artery the dorsalis pedis artery you will palpate just lateral to the extensor hallucis tendon in the first intermetatarsal space you palpate here for a dorsalis pedis artery just lateral to the extensor hallucis tendon in the proximal part of the first intermetatarsal space students this peripheral artery pulsation you will palpate to see whether any obstruction is there by thrombus and embolism in atrial fibrillation then one more thing which you have to examine in pulse examination is radio femoral delay how to look for radio femoral delay radio femoral delay you examine in coarctation of iota so students what you have to examine the last impulse is radio femoral delay radio femoral delay you look for coarctation of iota so how to examine for radio femoral delay you palpate the radial artery simultaneously you palpate the femoral artery again as the head of the femur in the mid inguinal point this is how you look for radio femoral artery radio femoral delay you can also check for radio femoral delay by making the patient stand up with the hand beside the body and then you palpate for the radial artery and the femoral artery